<clears throat> okay, hello everyone. Today is Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. So, I was having a conversation via email with someone, with one of my subscribers, and they were sharing some stuff, and, you know, as topics come up, the Lord will often um, tell me to address them on the channel. Um, he brings them to my attention, and uh, so I've I've kind of addressed this before, but maybe not in such a official, direct, maybe not officially from this angle. <clears throat> so I'm going to open in prayer. I'm sure you can see that this is an admonishment. This is a sermon, an admonishment titled, Your Resources Are Not to Go to Satan! Exclamation point. And this was dictated to me by Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. I have my notes ready. And the rest is just going to come spontaneously from the Lord. So let me just open in prayer. Father God, Yahweh, once again, Lord, I just plead the blood of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth over my entire domain in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. I ask you, Father God, Yahweh, in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please put a hot coal over my tongue and prevent me from saying anything not true, anything not coming from you, anything you don't want me to say or how you don't want me to say, I ask in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. Will you please quicken your Holy Spirit within me and give me a check in my spirit, Lord, if I'm about to say anything you don't want me to, to cross any boundaries, to go in any directions you don't want me to. I ask you, Yeshua, will you please breathe into me afresh your Holy Spirit <clears throat> and your peace that surpasses all comprehension, emotions, moods, and circumstances. I ask you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please give me the right articulation, the right words to say, the right way at the right time, the right vocabulary, the right scriptures, the right examples, the right analogies. <clears throat> I ask you, God, in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, for your presence. I ask that you, Holy Spirit, will you please baptize me afresh with your fire, May your words go forth and pierce hearts with conviction, Lord. I ask that this, this word, this, this admonishment, this sermon would bring clarity and confirmation to people regarding many different circumstances and situations and relationships. <clears throat> Please make your will known to people, Lord. I ask, Lord, that it be only your words coming out of my mouth in this recording instead of my own. I ask for all of this. With, I ask for your presence in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. Father God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit, Yeshua. I ask for all of this in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. Amen. <clears throat> okay. So the Lord wanted me to do an admonishment. The title he gave me, the title Yeshua gave me, is... Your resources are not, capital N-O-T, not, to go to Satan, exclamation point. So I'm going to remind you all again, or inform you if you aren't aware, Satan means adversary, enemy, opposition, the wrong side, okay? Satan has many forms. Many forms and types, okay? You've got Lucifer himself, you've got various types and forms of fallen angels, okay? You've got the reptilians, you've got um, the demons who send their spirits. You've got Nephilim. And the point that we're going to drive home in this sermon, in the times that we are living in, we are in the sorrows. For those who are not aware, we are in <clears throat> the last approximate seven years of the age, and we are in right now, March 27, 2024, we are still in the sorrows, which is the first approximate three and a half years of the approximate last seven years, okay? So right now, and the mark did get rolled out in 2020. This video is not about that particularly, but <clears throat> Satan includes those who have taken the mark. Okay? They have changed. They have lost their image of God. Their image of God has now been <clears throat> exchanged for the, for the image of jealousy. 
you can go to Ezekiel chapter 8 to reference what I'm talking about. And in the description box below or the comments below, I will put the link to the Rama God gave me years ago titled Lack of Intimacy with Me Can Damn You. Okay, we're talking about the marked here. That is the point that we're getting at in this sermon, in this admonishment. The people who have taken the mark. And I gotta be careful what I say. But there were two things that were rolled out worldwide in 2020. Those that you know have taken either of those. This is what we're talking about. Okay? So the Lord gave me three talking points. Talking point number one, Yeshua said, and this is like Rhema, what he gave me, okay? Yeshua said, the wealth is for my anointed. The wealth is for my anointed. That's what Yeshua said. The scripture he gave me to go along with this comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 22. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. But the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. This is the New King James translation, okay? Different translations render this a little bit differently. In place of the word sinner, some translations say wicked, okay? Because, again, you have to know how to comprehend God's word. You have to seek him for revelation. You have to ask him. So depending on the context, when you see the word sinner in scripture... Technically, we know you have, yes, Holy Spirit, scripture interprets scripture, okay? We know from the new covenant scripture that it says that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We are all sinners, okay? We all need a savior, right? So, but obviously in this passage, there is a distinction. There, there's a contrast being made here, okay? And so in this context, it's not meaning everyone. It's meaning the people who are particularly wicked, Okay, those who are not seeking the Lord, not repenting, etc. Okay, and really what it comes down to is who in their current status with God is in the Holy of Holies and who is not. Because again, um, I'm going to be updating it soon later on this year and I'll re roll it out on the channel. But a while back, the Lord had me create a chart in Excel titled The Categories of People to give people a visual. Okay, people that are in the Holy of Holies, which is Smyrna and Philadelphia, they're the ones who, when they die, will go to heaven. Or if they're still alive, they'll be, they'll either ascend as part of the two witnesses, if they're part of that group, or they will be taken to heaven in the rapture when Christ returns at the end of the age. Okay, everybody else is going to the lake of fire. Okay, I also did a teaching a while back, years ago. I think it was 2020, 2020, 2021, titled uh, Revelations on the Seven Churches of Revelation, okay? In the book of Revelation, Yeshua addresses seven churches. Those are postures of heart. Those are statuses with God, okay? And only two out of those seven go to heaven. Five out of seven go to the lake of fire, Okay? So let's go back to this. Pro so actually, let's just let's go to what, what the Lord said. So talking point number one. So, OK, from the top, uh, this is an admonishment. Your resources are not capital N-O-T to go to Satan exclamation point. Talking point number one. Yeshua says the wealth is for my anointed. Proverbs 13, 22. But the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. And again, some translations put it as the wicked. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Anyone who has not been conveyed into the kingdom, as it says in Colossians chapter 1, through consecrating themselves, means repenting of your sins, your idols, and pursuing deliverance. Okay, that's what it means when Yeshua says in Revelation to purchase your white garments from him. It means to go through some consecration. It means to pursue some deliverance.
to get rid of the evil spirits in your domain and your atmosphere. That's what it means, okay? If you've been conveyed into the kingdom because you've, you've done that, you've, to the best of your ability, to the best of your awareness, you have pursued deliverance, repented of your sins and your idols, and you are daily, you know, living a lifestyle of trying to consecrate yourself and be pleasing to God, you have been conveyed into the kingdom, then you are not considered a sinner in this context of this passage. You are considered righteous because you have now the righteousness of Christ, okay? The point that God wants me to make here is let's not get this mixed up. It says the wealth of the sinner, the wicked, is stored up for the righteous. Not the other way around. Not the other way around. It doesn't say the wealth of the righteous is stored or laid up for the wicked. <clears throat> Lord, am I allowed to anonymously use this example? Okay, so I was in conversation recently with someone and they were telling me that one of their relatives they know has taken the mark and I don't know the full story yet, but it doesn't really matter. One way or another, how things have been as of late is that they have been financially supporting this marked person, this damned person. And the Lord has, you know, brought this up because he wants to course correct this person and say, stop. Stop financially supporting someone who took the mark. Stop financially supporting the damned. Stop financially supporting Satan. Stop sowing into Satan. And for the person that I'm using this example, I have nothing against you. Please don't take this personal, okay? But God uses conversations that I have with people as teaching uh, tools, as, as promptings for, for teachings, okay? Um, we all make mistakes. It's a matter of once the Lord makes you aware of something, are you going to then repent, okay? The wealth of the wicked is stored or laid up for the righteous, not the other way around. You can... Lord, do you want me to use that word? Okay. You can sow your money, which is God's money. It's kingdom money. Okay. Your resources into something that is not God's kingdom. It's Satan's kingdom. And that's not good. What I'm hearing Holy Spirit say is you reap what you sow. Why do you want to sow into Satan? Why do you want to sow into the kingdom of darkness? Just stop and think about that. Right? What comes to mind is in Corinthians where it says, do not be yoked to an unbeliever. What does light have in common with darkness? Okay. Now, yeah, there's lots of different ways that we apply that, 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 that we are accustomed to thinking of. And m most of the time that's usually applied regarding, you know, trying to find a spouse and so forth. You know, you, you don't want to go and do missionary dating and all that kind of thing of, you know, trying to convert someone so that you can marry them and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, but it has many different applications and this is one of them. Okay. Do not yoke yourself to someone who's marked in any way, shape or form, including financially. Do not yoke yourself to someone who is damned, to someone who has had their image of God changed to the image of jealousy, to someone, I got to be careful what I say, who has had their, you know, D, you know, N, you know, A, you know, changed physically, like, okay, I, I, I don't know, I got to be careful what I say. I want you to think about this. Okay, Yeshua says, the wealth is for my anointed. That means those who have been conveyed into the kingdom, those in the Holy of Holies, Smyrna and Philadelphia. That's it. It's not the other way around, okay? Money is supposed to be coming into the kingdom, and it's supposed to be staying in the kingdom as much as possible, okay? It's supposed to be staying in the kingdom as much as possible, not being sent back out of the kingdom of God to the kingdom of darkness in terms of supporting someone who has taken the mark. Have I, have I covered this sufficiently, Lord? Okay. Point number two. 
Yeshua says, your money is the kingdom's apostrophe S as in ownership, possession. Okay. Your money is the kingdom's. Okay. We know from scripture, it says that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Um, there's that other verse that the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Okay. Everything ultimately is God's. He is sovereign. Okay. He's the creator. Okay. But whatever God has blessed you with, whatever he has allowed for you to have or orchestrated for you to have, it belongs to him. Okay. If you're a Christian, your money is his money. Your money is kingdom money. Your money is the kingdoms, says Yeshua. For this, we're going to go to the book of 3rd John. 3rd John, okay? There's the book of John, the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But then there's also, towards the end of the Bible, okay? There is 1st John, 2nd John, and 3rd John. We're going to go to the book of 3rd John, which is like a page, okay? There's not even chapters, but... So we'll just say chapter one, there's only one chapter. Yeshua said verse six through seven, which starts mid-sentence, of course. So I guess I'll just start in verse five to give you the full context of the sentence. Beloved, notice who's being addressed here. Beloved, those who are in the Holy of Holies, okay? You do faithfully, full of faith, full of trust in God, whatever you do for the brethren, meaning those who are in the Holy of Holies, and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. Okay. There's a lot to unpack here. What the Lord said to me was, see how it says here. So first of all, who's being addressed? Those in the Holy of Holies, okay? If you have been conveyed into the kingdom, you're a Christian, you have not taken the mark, your money is God's money. It is kingdom money, okay? You do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren, those who are also in the Holy of Holies with you, okay? And for strangers, but there's a stipulation here. There's a condition who have borne witness of your love before the church, okay? And what Yeshua said to me is that someone who has taken the mark, <laughs> they are now Satan, and so their witness, okay, think of everything in the court as, as, as a courtroom, because that's what it comes down to. Spiritually speaking, everything is a matter of the courtroom of heaven, okay? If someone has taken the mark, they have traded in their image of God for the image of jealousy. They are now damned. They are now part of Satan. They are now part of the kingdom of darkness. As far as God is concerned, as far as Father God Yahweh is concerned, their witness is worthless because they are now Satan. Their father is now Lucifer, the father of lies. Okay? Lord, have I? is there anything else I need to elaborate on that? Okay, continuing on. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. This is referring to tithing. This is referring to uh, tithes and offerings, okay? If you send them forward on their journey, and it's particularly for apostles because they are the missionaries. They are the ones who God calls to move around. They are the ones that God calls to plant churches, etc. In a manner, excuse me, in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. The Lord will bless you, okay? Because he's well pleased that you are supporting his anointed. Because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles, okay? Meaning that God's anointed, especially his highly anointed, okay? In Ecclesiastes it says High official watches over high official, okay? Even in the Holy of Holies, there's people who rank above other people, okay? There's officers ranked and appointed above other officers, okay? It says here, taking nothing from the Gentiles, okay? Meaning their money isn't supposed to... Lord, give me the right words. Their funding is supposed to come from those who consider themselves... Christians, okay? And they're not supposed to try to 
merchandise. They're not supposed to try to control or manipulate or any of that, okay? Whatever funding they get is supposed to be freely given, okay? <clears throat> so let's go back to point number two here. Yeshua says, your money is the kingdoms, okay? The point here is that your money is supposed to go towards God's officers, his fivefold ministry, as well as, as it says here, strangers. Yes, you are to care for strangers. Yeshua tells us that, right? He said that if someone needs a glass of water and you don't give them a glass of water, then he's going to consider you a goat and yada, yada, yada. But there is still discernment and wisdom to be applied, okay? If you know that someone has taken the mark, They're not included in this. Your preps, your money, your resources, okay? We are not to throw pearls to pigs. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. We are not to throw pearls to pigs. Do not cast your pearls before swine. Those who took the mark are pigs. They're swine. Yes, you're supposed to help those in need. I have preached on here earlier this year, and I recently posted it again on the community page, the five categories. Let's see if I can remember this off the top of my head. You have the Levites. This is known as the fivefold ministry, the officers, the anointed. Then you've got um, the widows. This means really women in general, okay? Especially the actual widows, yes. Okay, women in general, women who don't uh, have a husband or a father figure, okay? <clears throat> they don't have any personal kingdom Financer, God has had me preach and prophesy on here how the men are the kingdom financers, okay? Then you've got, of course, the orphans. This is really just children in general, especially orphaned children, but children in general, again, who don't have parents, who don't have a father figure, who don't have a kingdom financer, no one looking after them. And this could be a spiritual orphan. You know, what if someone just doesn't have a support system, etc., okay? Then you've got the uh, sojourner, the traveler, the foreigner, the alien, the migrant, Depending, okay, but again, you got to use discernment and wisdom. And then just the needy in general, you know, those who, who just, for whatever reason, they're in, they're in a bad way, they're disabled, what have you, okay? <clears throat> but you're supposed to ask him first. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. Because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles, okay? Meaning that if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and not doing what they're not supposed to be doing, they're not manipulating anybody, they're not merchandising the gospel, etc., etc., okay? They are living on the tithes that are due them, which is what is referred to as rewards in scripture, okay? If you hear sermons, or really, excuse me, if you hear prophecies, if you hear rhema words talking about rewards, it's referring to the tithes that are due to the anointed, okay? So talking point number two, Yeshua says your money is the kingdoms, okay? So circle back to point number one. The wealth is for the anointed, okay? The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous, not the other way around. Your money, your kingdom money, is not to be going to people who took the mark. That's the point that we're, we're that God wants me to drive home, okay? If you know someone took the you-know-what up their nostril, or the you-know-what in their arm, you're not supposed to be donating to them. You're not supposed to be tithing to them. You're not supposed to be supporting them. You're not supposed to be taking them in. You're not supposed to be doing anything for them. Because it's ultimately a waste. They're going to the lake of fire. They don't belong to Christ anymore. If they ever did. But they have lost their eligibility. Thank you, Lord, for the words. Okay? They are no longer even eligible for heaven. If they ever were, okay? Some people, when they were born, they were born Nephilim and they weren't God's seed to begin with. That's a whole nother story, okay? But if they took the mark, they have lost, they have forfeited their eligibility for salvation. Talking point number three, the last point. Yeshua says, I've told you to separate. I've told you to separate. So we're going to go to the book of Matthew. Now, back in 2021... I did a video, I just shared it on the community page again, and it was titled something to the effect of, you know, um, in these last days, as Yeshua said, that your enemies would be of your own household, your own family, 
and I, th I think that was like an hour long. Um, and maybe I'll link that below for you, okay? But let's go to Matthew chapter 10, okay? Again, this is the New King James translation. The subtitle here says, Christ brings division, starting in verse, starting at verse 34. Yellow, uh, yeah, yellow, yellow ink, no April, red ink, red ink, Yeshua speaking, do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Okay? And household can also mean family. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Now, for those who love to take scripture so legalistically, so literally, let me unpack this a little bit more for you, okay? This, this does not mean that it only applies to your immediate family of, you know, your parents or your children, okay? This could be your cousin. This could be your uncle, It could be your, your best friend, which now is your enemy, okay? Whoever it is, if they took the mark, you need to cut them off. Yeshua says, I've told you to separate. Verse 36, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household, okay? Once someone takes the mark, they have now become an enemy of Christ. They have now become an enemy of Yahweh. They have now become an enemy of Holy Spirit. They have now become an enemy of the kingdom of God. They have now become an enemy of Christianity. And if you're a Christian, they have now become an enemy of you. Okay? They are now Satan, adversary, enemy, opposition. What I'm hearing Holy Spirit say is that verse in Revelation where I believe it's the angel that says that the wicked will remain wicked. Where is that? I think it's like towards the end of the book of Revelation. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I know I have it highlighted. I'm pretty sure it's the angel that says it. I'm not going to waste time trying to find it, but I know that there's a verse, and I'm pretty sure it's the angel in the book of Revelation, and it says, you know, let those who are wicked remain wicked, and the righteous remain righteous, okay? I know this is not a new concept. If you've been in Christian circles, watching Christian videos, this concept of separation, this concept of the sheep from the goats, this concept of just, yeah, separation, okay? But please... Let it sink in, like actually think about it, actually ponder it, actually contemplate, like what does that mean? What does it actually look like, okay? Because this is what we're talking about, okay? The people who have taken the mark are only going to increasingly be wicked. They're going to remain wicked, but they're going to get worse. They're going to get worse, okay? Because, oh, because of so many reasons. Because in their very blood, they are now inherently evil. What was implanted or injected into them, even on a physical, in the natural, in a, on, a, on a physical level, was evil spirits. It, it was evil entities, okay? They now have evil entities, like, physically in them. God is resetting things right now. I've heard, or I've seen two people on YouTube 
that I respect as hearing from God as mouthpieces. And they were talking about resetting. Okay. God's had me recently give words on here about how he's reconciling the books, you know, and so forth. This is what God's doing right now. And he is course correcting. Okay. If you are supporting someone who has taken the mark, you are to stop. You are to repent of that. Okay. God wants his money in his kingdom, not being leaked out to the kingdom of darkness. Okay. So the question is, what are you doing with your money, with God's money? Are you investing it back into the kingdom? Are you even asking him what he wants you doing with it? Okay. So that you're stewarding it in a pleasing way to him. You're supposed to be tithing to the officers unless he's told you not to. You're supposed to be supporting the officers, the anointed, those in the kingdom, okay? Whatever God has told you to, to do. But he's making it clear, and he wants me to make it clear to you. You are not to be tithing to, donating to, or supporting in any way, shape, or form those who have taken the mark. And, and let me specify, yes, Holy Spirit, let, let me clarify and specify. <sighs> In this recording, and in all the recordings that I've done, re re talking about those who have taken the mark, okay? We're talking about people who are above the age of accountability. If the person was above the age of accountability, which is pretty much puberty, okay? And, and if they were in their right mind. So, for example, like my own grandma, okay? My own grandma has had dementia for a long time now. And, you know, they put her in assisted living, and then they put her in a home, and now they put her in hospice, okay? And they gave her the mark, probably umpteen times. God has told me, and I have sought him on this for years now, literally, and he has consistently told me, he's not going to hold that against her because she wasn't in her right mind, okay? She wasn't in her right mind. Now, if, let's say, you know, a five-year-old child was given it, it's not going to be held against that child, okay? Nor should we hold it against children under the age of accountability, nor should we hold it against those who were not in their right mind, okay? But those who are above the age of accountability, who were in their right mind when they took it, it's held against them by God, and therefore it should be held against them by us, okay? And this is not a matter of being cold, being cruel. It's a matter of wisdom. It's a matter of protection for yourself, okay? Because most of you, if not all of you, haven't really gotten anywhere near the amount of deliverance that you need. And here's what you don't realize. When you are yoking yourself, when you are interacting with, when you are in relationship with, okay, someone who took the mark especially, you are putting yourself at so much spiritual risk of coming into agreement with their evil spirits, because if anybody is loaded with evil spirits, it's those who took the mark, okay? You are putting yourself at spiritual risk of coming into agreement with their evil spirits, which puts you at risk of losing your own salvation because then those evil spirits can influence you and your free will decisions, okay? This is a matter of wisdom. Everything that God tells us to do is a matter of wisdom, right? Um, what Holy Spirit is reminding me of right now is even back in the Old Testament, you know, there were passages where Father God Yahweh said, kill everybody, like, right? He would tell Israel to go in. He would tell his people, go in and kill everybody, the men, the women, the children. And if you just look at that isolated, it's like, who could worship a God like that? that that's horrible, right? But then when you realize, okay, it's because they were Nephilim. It's because their blood went back to the fallen angels. They were inherently evil, okay? He's doing it. So that they stop reproducing, that so that they stop proliferating, is that the right word? He was doing it to protect his seed, his people, okay? You must separate, you must cut off, you must stop interacting with, you must block, you must be done with, you must end your relationships with those who have taken the mark. And that includes financially. You're not to be living with them. You're not to be su financially supporting them. You're not to be in relationship with them. You're not to be making them privy to your business. Because these are 
one of the types of people who, when the crap really starts hitting the fan, the second uh, half here, or the, the, the last half, the last three and a half years in the Great Tribulation, the wrath of God, who do you think is going to be turning the true Christians in? Th this is one of the groups. It's going to be those who are marked, okay? Because Satan is going to be increasingly influencing them, and they're going to be the ones who, you know, um, however you want to put it, report, turn in, tattletale on, whatever, the true Christians. Because the true Christians are going to be hunted. So, it's time. Take this information, go back to God, discuss it with Him, fast and pray, but this is what the Lord has been telling me literally for years consistently, okay? I'm homeless. I've been homeless, I've been living homeless predominantly almost three years now. And there's, has, even just recently, there was a housing opportunity I had, and this lady... I mean, it sounded great. She was talking the talk. She, she was aware of what was going on and everything. But, uh, you know, God t God told me, ask her if, sh if she took the you-know-what up her nose. And sure enough, yeah, she said she did. And she's one of those people that believes that the, you know, you-know-what in the arm is it. But she doesn't believe that the you-know-what up the nose was it. There's, there's a lot of people like that, okay? And God said, no, you're not allowed to live with her. That's it. Period. Okay. <clears throat> we are not... To yoke ourselves with the, with the damned, with the marked. We are not. So, again, from the top, admonishment. Your resources are not to go to Satan. Number one, Yeshua says, the wealth is for my anointed. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous, not the other way around. The wealth of the righteous is not for the wicked. Number two, your money is the kingdom, says Yeshua. Okay, again, you're supposed to be supporting the beloved. You're supposed to be supporting the beloved and those who have not taken the mark, who need help, who God has convicted you to help. That's who you're supposed to be supporting, not those who've taken the mark. Okay, number three, Yeshua says, I've told you to separate. Again, he says, I, can't, I, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. A man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. What he is saying here, what this means, is that if you love anyone... If you prioritize, which means worship, okay? If, if you worship, if you prioritize anyone above God and what he has told us, what, what his Logos word says, what he has convicted you in your heart of, if you do not obey and submit to that, then you're not worthy of him and you're at risk of losing your salvation. Okay? Because it says in Matthew seven twenty one, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, right? Let me find it. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Are you doing the will of the Father in heaven? Supporting the damned is not Father God Yahweh's will. Neglecting those who have not taken the mark, who need help, is not Father God Yahweh's will. Neglecting the officers that need help, who are supposed to be supported, if you are not helping when God has given you a conviction, when he has said so in his word, okay, if, if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, or if you're doing what you're not supposed to be doing, okay, any way you slice it, are you doing the Father's will? Because if not, you're at risk of not going to heaven, period. You have to put your foot down. You have to make boundaries. God is a God of order and boundaries. You know, I was, I was driving today to go run an errand and there was someone walking on the other side of the street, you know, facing me. And from afar off, this person looked like a man. And the closer I got, as I drove forward, I realized it wasn't a man. It was a woman. And I just kind of said to God, as I was driving, I said, you know, Lord, just seriously, you can't tell anymore. 
you can't tell unless you like really get close up. And, and even then you still can't even tell a man from a woman anymore, you know? And what God kind of like had me speak back to him was there's no boundaries anymore. It's all chaos. Okay. Lucifer is rising. Satan is rising. Okay. And that's what he is. He is a lack of boundaries. He is a lack of order. Our God is a God of order. It says in what Corinthians, let everything be done in, in a proper order. Okay. We are to make a boundary. We are to say, no, Satan, here's the line in the sand, right? What comes to mind right now is the verse where it says about tolerating Jezebel, okay? Anything, Lord, I'm listening. What I'm hearing the Lord say right now is we are not to tolerate or enable or support the marked, the damned. They are Satan. They are adversary. They are enemy. They are opposition. They are risk. They are danger. Okay, yes, Lord. He's giving me the analogy right now of, would you walk up to a wild animal like a lion or a tiger or something? And act like it's not as dangerous as it is, okay? That's how, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for scripture, yes, okay. Your enemy prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You need to start perceiving those who took the mark, the damned, you need to start seeing them as lions prowling around looking for someone to devour because that's all they are at this point. They are Satan's they are Lucifer's pawns at this point. They are Satan. And they can be a danger to you. They can be a risk to you. Would you bring a lion into your home? I know some people these days are because they're just foolish. I hope you're getting my, my, my point, okay? Even recently, that, that, that last Airbnb that I stayed at, right? I was telling the host, look, you got wild animals walking right up to the back door. You might want to consider putting up a fence. Think about a fence, right? What is a fence? It's a boundary. It's a boundary saying, no, you can't come in. You stay out there. I'm staying in here. This is my safe zone. You stay out there. You that, that is dangerous to me, you that is a threat to me, you stay out there. This is my boundary. That's what a fence is, okay? You need to put up a fence, you need to put up a fence on a soul level regarding your relationships. Where do you need to put up a fence? Who do you need to put up a fence with? You need to put up boundaries, healthy boundaries. There's a book actually that I read a long time ago written by uh, two Christian authors, Clouds and Townsend, and then the title of it in all caps was Boundaries. Okay, there, there's another um, book I read a long time ago called uh, Safe People, and it had a picture of a traffic light. Okay, this is all just kind of old stuff coming back to me right now. Okay, you need to learn about what a healthy boundary is and how to make it. Okay, but you need to really particularly do this with those who have taken the mark. We are to separate. You need to seek the Lord about your relationships. Who does he want you staying in relationship with? Who does he want you ending relationship with? And as always, regarding money, it's his money. Where does he want you sending it, donating it, tithing it? It's not to those who've taken the mark. It's not. Lord, any, is there anything else? Yeshua. Holy Spirit, Yahweh, anything else? Did I cover it all, Lord? Okay, so... In the description box below and or the comments below, since I can't seem to post external live links anymore, I will put all the stuff that I mentioned, if, if God tells me to, um, so you can look for that. Always check the description box, but also the comments, uh, because, again, YouTube has changed the way they're doing things, and God told me not to, not to jump through their hoops. So, because I'm not jumping through their hoops... Um, I have to put external live links in the comments and I, have, and I can't pin the comments 
So just always check both the description boxes and the comments of my videos. And um, if you want to reach me privately with any curious questions, you are welcome to email me. My email is on my about page. And um, Lord, do you want me to put it in the description box? Okay, I will put my email address in the description box below for you. Um, please come at me with a heart posture of curiosity, okay? Don't come at me with assumptions. Don't come at me with accusations. And I just want to remind you, it says in Corinthians that those who are guilty of reviling do not inherit the kingdom of God, okay? Do not revile me. Do not revile God's anointed. If you don't agree, have a posture of curiosity. Maybe there's something that you're assuming that isn't true. Maybe there's something you're not aware of. Maybe you aren't aware of scripture. Maybe you forgot about scripture, whatever the case may be. So always have a posture of curiosity, okay? Always ask, you know, April, you mentioned this or whatever, you know, can you please elaborate on that? Or can you explain this? Or, you know, here's my understanding of it. You know, it, you know, try to be, <laughs> try to not be so, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Try not to be picking a fight, you know? We don't need to be fighting. It says in scripture to try to get along with each other, you know? All right, I bless you all in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth.